Hi, this is Eri from Palmieri Arts and Crafts, coming to you from Adirondack region in northern New York. This is a knitting podcast where I talk everything about knitting. Uh, today, I would like to introduce three finished projects, and then later on, I'm going to talk about a work in progress and a little bit of my life. Uh, so the first thing that I finished is the socks. So usually I'm not a socks person and this is probably the first time knitting socks in five, six years. And I think what daunting me is when I finish one socks, I'm so done with the project and then I don't get onto the next project, ended up with one sock and I don't ever wear them. Uh, so recently I came, um, I came across this two out of one sock method and I really wanted to try. That sounded very interesting. So I had this yarn from Hobby Lobby. It was a impulse buy because it's merino super wash, 100% merino wool. Um, and the price wasn't too bad. It was, uh, it said $14.99, but honestly, um, I'm pretty sure it was on sale and I got it for half price or something like that. And it says hand dye. So I mean, it's not too bad, I thought. It is denim and it has really nice colors. Very dark navy blue, but it's really nice. So I picked this up like two years ago and I never really worked on it and it's been hanging on my back stash right there. So I said I need to do something about it. And then this two at a time socks just uh, came up to my idea and it was perfect yarn. So um, I got the pattern from Toe up two at a time socks by Laura. Uh, I cannot pronounce her last name. It's really hard. It's M A G D Y C Z. I'm not really sure how to pronounce that name, uh, but she's on Ravelry and it's a free pattern, which is great. Um, and then she also posted a tutorial of how to do Turkish cast on which I never heard of before um, and it was really easy. You can basically wrap the yarn around the needles and start the cast on. So uh, it was a really nice easy pattern and pretty much knit all the way. So you can see it's all stuck in it except this little tiny lace line. I don't know if you can see very well. Hold on. There's a tiny little lace line right there on the side. So it was perfect for uh, between project and experience that two socks all at once knitting technique. So I highly recommend her pattern. It was great. So that was my first finished project this month. And I'm, I've been meaning to do a um, knitting podcast for last three weeks. I meant to publish this the end of last month, but uh, kids happened and they're on summer break. So everything got pushed over. Uh, anyways, so that was my first project I finished. And then last episode, I talked about lace shawl I've been working on, and I only had a few stitches to finish when I recorded last time. Well, uh, I finally finished and actually did the blocking because that's, to me, it takes forever to get to that point of setting everything up and soaking the project. Um, but this time my kids were home and they helped so much. Um, and I wanted to do some time lapse uh, really quick from the beginning to finish blocking process on YouTube, which I failed to download for some reason. I don't know what happened, but it went blank and I couldn't upload on the YouTube, but I could do it on my social media. 
But anyways, kids were around and they were helping me. And it's so funny how they played around the camera because they knew I was recording something. So they're doing stuff in front of the camera.、Uh, so, you know what? And maybe I should share this little footage of highlight what they were doing. And Some people who d o e s n t have kids might be like, oh my god, can kids be so loud? And I think if you're mom or dad, you can completely agree that life can be chaotic. But here is the footage. <laughs> I clearly was having so much fun. I mean, after the fact I looked at the video, I was laughing and smiling, and everything was really cute. But honestly, if this is going on all day long, every day in the house, when you're trying to finish something,、um, as you can see on the video, maybe I'm like really focused on what I'm doing and trying to ignore everything that's going on.、Um, That's where I was at. I was in that state of okay, I'm just gonna ignore what they're doing and focus on this and finish this.、Um, so, anyways, I finished the show, and this is how it looks like. So pretty, isn't it? Oh, I just love the pattern. It's very bouncy, very light. So, this is going to be my Summer show.、Uh, once, once it is a little more cooler and less humid, this is going to be my favorite show this summer. So that's that. And、uh, I shared the pattern last time, but this is from Jared Flood from Brooklyn Tweet. The pattern name is Rock Island. And I used the yarn from Cascade. Yarn、uh, alpaca lace, and I don't know how I ended up to how I ended up with two navy blue p r o j e c t I mean, I do like navy blue,、uh, but it was really interesting how I ended up with these colors three p r o j e c t in a row because I have another sweater for kids that's in the same color, too. So, anyways, that was my finished project. And the third finished project is my market bag, which I have a pattern for sale on Etsy and Ravelry right now. But these are the market bag. And、um, I am intending to make a free pattern on my blog and also a YouTube. For like Follow along video, I made a few of those for my patterns, but I'm really trying to make a follow along tutorial YouTube video so people who does n t like to read、um, all the patterns through or just would like to, like, visual people, like, I am a visual person, I do remember things when I look at it. Over reading, so、uh, you know, I just thought it would be nice to have a YouTube video attached to the pattern. So, anyways, I'm intending to make YouTube video how to make this market bag, but this is a pattern I released last summer. Maybe I'll change the color because this is blowing up so much with the light. Yeah, that's better. Yeah, so this is. 
a market bag and it stretches a lot since it's lace pattern so I'm thinking maybe I will change the main panel to less stretchy material uh, not the material but the pattern in that way it won't stretch too much but I do love this market bag and yes it is a little holy I should say really big lace as you can see the lace is really big so I'm thinking about maybe making same style but different panel in that way it doesn't stretch too much and you can also put small object in here because this is just for like groceries or farmers market when you like to get vegetables or uh, bread or something like that so but yes this is my favorite pattern so far and it is available for purchase on Ravelry and uh, my Etsy store the link is in the below in the description so if you're interested and would like to purchase and support my business that'd be great uh, but if you like to wait for the free pattern I promise you it's coming out really soon okay so this is my finished project and these three are going to the local uh, craft store uh, so it's a limited finished pro product that I'm selling in the store so there is that so those are finished project uh, it's been pretty hectic in my house and I haven't had a lot of finished project recently uh, so the first working project I would like to share is this beautiful shawl it's a work in progress um, two episodes ago I talked about what should I do with this leftover yarn and three people replied to me and one person said try birds of feather shawl because that's only use half um, so half the shawl is constructed with lace weight and the other half is constructed with finger weight um, so I said that sounds like a really good idea and I got the the pattern and uh, I also was wondering like which color should I use because this is very bright solid orange with a little bit of sparkle in it I don't know if you can see with this camera but a tiny bit of sparkle in it and I said well if I'm gonna combine with other color yarn because it's a border pattern um, I would like to have something light but I don't want it to be boring. I don't want it to be solid color. I just want it to have a little touch of different tones or shades. So um, I found one on Instagram. A person who, the dyer I've been following on the Instagram posted this beautiful yarn, uh, but I think it's blowing up because of the lighting. It's very hard to control the lighting especially I'm not a professional video creator so I'm gonna put the video right here how pretty it is and when I saw that picture I said wow this is gonna be perfect this is exactly what I'm I'm looking for because it has a little bit of pink and pretty bright yellow and a tiny touch of orange and I figured that's gonna look really good with this solid orange color and it actually is i love how this is turning up well again i might have to insert the video right here so you can see the actual color uh, because the lighting is too harsh right now so anyways this is what i've been working on and um the sad part is yesterday no two days ago i was trying to do more and I was doing the repeat like here and I thought I supposed to change to a different repeat and I had like maybe three more borders on this shawl two days ago and I thought I made a mistake and I just unravel everything 
so I do have a little tiny ball and then little tiny ball right here because I just unravel everything and when I picked up from right here this this uh, change from the fingering yarn to the lace yarn I picked up picked up stitches and tried to redo it I realized I did not make any mistake so I just unravel three borders for no reason and I'm just doing same work all over again so I'm a little sad right now like why didn't I double check when I thought I made a mistake I just went ahead to go from the needle and just frogged it which I didn't have to frog it so I might take a break from this for a few days until I go back to it but I know every knitter who is passionate about knitting always come across this frogging issue so I know you can relate to what I'm talking about so anyways that's that that's my work in progress and the other work in progress is my sweater as in tea and this is my very very first uh, wearable like I always like to design some um, home decor like a little things that's quick project and also shawl or blanket that's flat and doesn't require so much measuring and complicated patterns but I like to step up a little bit and start making sweater and you know all other all sorts of things so I decided I am going to make a sweater or summer tea and this is happening almost there and it looks really big but I really want it to be very loose and relaxing fitting so that's my goal uh, so far gauge seems right it just looks so big right now uh, but when I put it on it looks fine so it's supposed to be this is a uh, neckline is just very neckline is very simple it's just rolling down naturally because it's stocking at stitch and then I like to maybe stop it around the waist or a little below the waistline and I was thinking this is going to be a very simple tee to put on top of like one piece or a tank top but now I am almost done I feel like this is too boring because the color is like I like solid I won't say solid I like this subtle color but I feel like this can be a little too boring for the summertime so instead of doing i-cord edge I was gonna do i-cord on both sleeves and the bottom I might do a tiny bit of lace for both end of the sleeves and the body so we'll see we'll see what happens but I am very excited this is my very first attempt to make a garment so this is going to be really fun I think and I'm sorry I didn't realize I'm hitting the mic the entire time so I'm sorry if you've been hearing really bad <laughs> smashing noise I apologize so that's that um, oh and when I was making this tea I came across this wonderful thing let me see this little tiny string absolutely not a needle or a circular knitting needle it's called pearl string and I have no idea about this this is absolutely amazing so um, 
the original person who made this named this as the knitting barber uh, the person who is actually a hair salon a hair stylist barber uh, also loves knitting and she started this um, I don't know the knitting knitting website and she came up with this amazing silicone string it's just a silicone string it's very soft and kind of stretchy and it, it's hollow inside it's a tube so when you are knitting especially like circular knitting and trying to put the sweater on most of the time your circular needle cable is way too short to put it on so it's usually gathered whoops gathered like this when you're knitting so when you try to put it on either you're gonna lose a stitch from the knitting needles or you have to put on the waist yarn which requires tapestry needle to pick up every single stitch to put the waist yarn so you can stretch where you're working on like this to try it on and honestly using tapestry needle can be a little pain and this person came up with this silicone tube to put it on the edge of this needle the point pointy end so that's where the pointy end is to put it right here and it's attached oh maybe you can't see oh there that's better and it's attached to the knitting needle and you just need to transfer the stitches onto the tube just like this and then try it on and then once you are done trying it on then you can attach the knitting needle to the tube again and then put the knitting needle through all of these stitches so it's absolutely amazing and one downside is you cannot really use it for smaller needle um, because if you have really really tiny needle like US size 3 or US size 2 then this tube will be bigger than your knitting needle so the things won't slide off but as long as you're working on like a medium size to larger size this works absolutely amazing uh, so i do recommend to get this little tube if you like to make sweater or tea something wearable that you like to put it on and make sure everything is fitting this is an amazing knitting gadget that i just found uh, it is either called pearl string or uh, TKB, the knitting barber. I think it's TKB string or something like that. So, yeah, TKB cords. TKB cords for the short of the knitting barber. So, that's something I learned. <laughs> it was really awesome when I found it. I was so excited. So these are all my whips. And if you would like to only hear about knitting, uh, maybe this is the good place to finish. But if you are interested in other stories, something I like to share, uh, then please stay. But anyways, since the last episode, I did have quite a bit of event going on. Uh, it, was the e it was the end of the school year, so we had so many field trips uh, for my pre-K. Uh, my sons are in pre-k and first grade so we did have multiple field trips scheduled and of course towards the end of the year there's um, a celebration for my pre-k son ran uh, he was very excited he finished his first year of school and graduated 
so a lot of things was going on from the school and then they also got allergies they always have this upper respiratory allergy all the time um, and with COVID and all that um, they tend to get sent home because of that since last fall and I know teacher and the nurse they already know he tends to get congested uh, but then sometimes like this year was the worst he just constantly coughing it was awful like listening to him cough at night and he cannot sleep and wakes up uh, so that was going on and so all of that was happening spontaneously within maybe two weeks and then things got settled down a little bit um, and then my husband he is a country music fan uh, there was a Zach Brown band is that one yeah Zach Brown band coming to like two hours away from our home and he was really excited got the tickets so we had a date night to just um, enjoy ourselves and enjoy the music uh, so we went to Saratoga Springs and of course wherever I go I go to a yarn store if there is any and I looked for it and I knew there was one because I've been there five years ago uh, so the shop name is Common Thread, Sa Common Thread Saratoga, and I went there, and of course I have to get a beautiful yarn. So I got two of very local yarn dyer yarn. So one is from Fiber Me Dis, and hand dyed. It is so pretty and the other one is from whole knit and cabudo cabudo yeah so this is another one and this coral pink is my favorite color like you wouldn't believe from you know what I have shown in last three episodes because everything was like dark blue and brown but these are my actual favorite colors and this was actually my wedding theme color too so I was very excited I can finally uh, use this nice hand dyed yarn uh, because before I was making physical product finished product and what happened is when you are material cost is high then finished pro product has to be a high priced and I couldn't do that with um, knitting product as you know knitting takes forever so even just a teeny tiny things it takes like three hours and if you have so many order comes in which is great um, you know you cannot catch up the pace and plus I cannot price things like $150 or $200 every time I make something uh, so I have to always um, get more reasonable yarn like high quality but reasonable yarn so my product price won't be too high so it was almost impossible to get uh, indie dyers yarn or any luxury yarn from local stores so now I changed my business model to more like designing and pattern pattern sale. Uh, now I can actually enjoy this luxury yarn too. So I was very excited to get this hunk of yarn. Uh, so anyways, I was very happy to meet the owner. She was amazing. We just chatted for a while and um, until my husband is like, hey, where are you? I thought you're done. <laughs> but anyways it was a great store so if you are in the area or you happen to be in the area I highly recommend to stop by the yarn store um, so anyways I was talking to her and she said Saratoga Springs is actually a high risk high COVID case area she did say that to me and they still required masks well, we had that conversation, went to a concert. Three days after the concert, I started with this fever and chill and it just didn't feel right. It wasn't like 
normal cold. So I have so much COVID test in my house right now. Tested myself, positive. Like within two minutes, it showed positive. And it was just a fever, chill. I said, oh, well, it's like flu and it disappeared in a day. And I thought, I'm one of those people who doesn't get affected by this. Well, next day I started coughing and coughing and coughing and coughing and then really congested and I was pretty worn out. Um, the fatigue was a real thing. It just was not great. So I was basically off from all other stuff for about a week and finally back to my regular activities but even then I had coughing here and there like coughing fit here and there for like two more weeks that was really weird uh, so that was finally disappeared I'm not coughing anymore and then I went to Montreal, Canada, which I haven't been into town for a long time. Uh, so I went to Montreal and the purpose of Montreal trip was to go to a, well, couple of a yarn store. Uh, so the first place I went to was Espastrico. I was so impressed with that store, with all the collections. Uh, oh, beautiful, beautiful, beautiful yarns. And the highlight of what I saw was from La Bien Ami. I don't know if I said it right. Um, she is very big on Instagram and really, really popular indie dyer. And she lives in Paris, but I think she's from America her colors and hue and all like the yarn is so beautiful and whatever I see on Instagram I always dreamed of actually seeing the color and holding her yarn and they had many of her yarn I was very excited and it was absolutely beautiful uh, so I really loved seeing her yarn and the purpose of this trip was to get a new yarn for my next sweater project, which I have all cooked up in my head. I haven't put it in the pattern and actually started yet, just because my tea needs to be done like really soon before the summer ends. Um, sorry, my lighting was awful. I don't know how long it's been like this. But anyways, this is the yarn I got it's from Drops Air and it's so squishy and light and fluffy but the yarn is pretty thick so I'm very excited to have this and I have everything planned from the neckline to sleeves and how it's gonna look like so I cannot wait to work with this yarn but first gotta finish the tea design and because I got so much yarn they gave me a free bag in French because it's in Montreal Canada it's French region uh, but it said I have no regret and I absolutely absolutely do not have any regret buying this yarn <laughs> I don't know how my husband feel about that but Oh well, it's gonna turn into a sweater. So that was um, Espastrico. And we also went to La Boubines de Lane. My French is not great, um, but it is another store in Montreal, kind of the other side of Montreal. And they did have a more heavier yarn compared to lighter yarn. So if you're looking for worsted weight yarn, I would recommend to go there. Um, and I think the yarn is more reasonable yarn compared to Espace Trico. Uh, but both of them are great. So if you have time, definitely go to both stores. 
I just loved it. And the staff, staff member I met there was amazing. She's young, she's in school, and she doesn't know how to do tapestry. And I just connected with her, and she said she's going to South Asia this month. So that was extra fun because my friend who are with me is from Singapore and she knew all about Malaysia and all that area. So they were talking about where to go and it was very nice to connect people. And that's something I cannot do buying a yarn from online because you don't have any human connection. And that's part of the great thing about knitting because you get to meet people and know people with somebody who has same interest. So it was a really, really good trip just to go to yarn store in Montreal. So anyways, that was my trip in Montreal and I did have a first knitting class like I mentioned last time. Um, it was I won't say a fail but just not well planned because I didn't realize when I scheduled knitting class I didn't realize it was a Father's Day weekend right after school went to summer break and was it right after or right before? I think it was right before and then um, yeah so that was already a fail and I didn't realize uh, the other side who let me use a venue also didn't know until really close date so I had only two people but I get to teach two people who has never held yarn and knitting needles so hopefully I get to see them again I also have a knitting circle locally so I told them if you have any question please feel free to stop by and I am more than happy to teach so hopefully I get to see them again and they are actually on to knitting now um, but it's summertime so we'll see uh, I think I'm gonna do summer class and uh, not summer class knitting class in the fall when people start to think about knitting as a good hobby so that was that but I had a lot of preparation to do uh, I never taught anybody who never held knitting needles and yarn before so that was a really good experience for me and um, yeah I would like to continue doing that and spread the joy of knitting uh, other than just YouTube. YouTube is amazing and I love putting content out there for other knitters but and great to communicate with people on the comment and all that but cannot beat actual face-to-face -face interaction that's for sure. So I think that's all I wanted to talk about in this podcast. Uh, I know I said I will do this every month and this video, this episode was way overdue two weeks ago. Uh, so I feel like I broke the promise but at the same time here I am. Kids are gone right now this evening so I'm making quick video. And I don't know since schedule is kind of pushed back it's mid almost mid July so I guess my next episode will be mid August instead of the end of the month we'll see what happened there's a lot going on so I tend to keep going and I think I should stop if you have any comment any thought any anything please leave a comment below so I get to know you and I also have a knitting group on Facebook and Ravelry which I don't have many people right now there's only a handful few people Ravelry I think I only have like three people so um, if you like to join and see my progress as a designer or you, if you have any question there is a Q&A column in Ravelry uh, group page is called Palmary, P A L 
M A R I Palmary Love to Knit Group. Uh, so if you're interested, please join the group. And I hope to get to know you um, even through the website. And someday, once the group is bigger, maybe we can do a live chat. So hopefully that will happen someday soon. All right. Well, thank you for watching all the way to the end. Um, I hope you have a great summer and I will see you next month. Bye bye. Happy knitting.